Protection with Blessings. Mangala Sutta. By Venerable Uttamo Thera. 21. Respect. The commentary explained it as showing respect in the appropriate way towards Buddhas, Paksekha Buddhas, disciples of the Buddha, from Arya disciples to ordinary monks or Sangha, one's teacher and preceptor, i.e., for a monk, towards parents, father and mother, towards elder brother and sister, and towards others, e.g., old people. The result of respect, reverence, veneration is good rebirth, human and heavenly worlds, if born as human will be in a higher class family. In quite a few suttas the Buddha mentioned non-decline of a Buddhist monk. One sutta was in the Book of Seven, Anguttara Nikaya. Sutta 32. Apamada, there a deity came to the Buddha and told him the seven qualities of respect or reverence, which are possessed by a monk who would not decline. These were, respectful towards the Buddha, dharmas, sangha, samadhi, the training, apamada and holding hospitality in reverence. The Buddha agreed with him and retold this episode to the monks. Therefore, respect is not only with human beings, but includes wholesome dharmas. Human beings do not respect to wholesome dharmas so that there are a lot of human problems and suffering arising in societies. So, the Buddha said, respect or reverence was a blessing. We must show respect to respectable people, and it is a noble state of mind. It is a praiseworthy action in this life, and in the next life will have the result of a good and noble life. Therefore, it has good results in this life and after. The objects of respect are the three noble treasures of the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, Tiratana or Ratanataya, one's parents, one's teachers, people who one older than us, especially old-aged people, people have noble qualities and someone has gratitude on you. The action of showing respect to respectable people supports the development of Brahmavihara Dharma, love, metta, compassion, karuna, appreciative joy, mudita, and equanimity, apekka, for both sides. So, both sides have benefits. The action of showing respect has four benefits, longevity, beauty, happiness, and strength, mind and body strength. These results were mentioned by the Buddha in a discourse. This story was in the Dharmapada, the Thousand, Sahasavaga. The story of a Yuvadhana Kumara. A couple had a son and took him to see the Buddha. They paid obeisance to the Buddha, and he said to the parents only by, May you live long. Then the Buddha predicted the impending death of their son. To prevent his early death, he advised them to build a pavilion at the entrance of their home. Put the child on a couch in the pavilion. Invited the monks to recite the paritas, protective charms for seven days there. On the seventh day, the Buddha himself came, followed by deities from all over the universe. At that time an ogre named Avaradhaka came there waiting for the chance to take the child away. With many deities were arriving at the scene, the ogre had to retreat backward to give way, and he was very far away from the child. For the whole night, the recitation of Paritas was going on, and then protected the child's life. The next day the parents took their son to see the Buddha. After the child paid respect to the Buddha, he said to him, May you live long. The Buddha also said that he would live up to 120 years and named him Ayuvadhana. The child grew up, and one day with his companions went to see the Buddha and the Sangha. The monks recognized him and asked the Buddha, For being is there any means of gaining longevity? The Buddha's answer was by respecting and honoring the elders, wise and virtuous people would gain longevity, 
beauty, happiness, and strength. Then the Buddha spoke the following verse. Verse 109. Someone always respects and honors those who are older and virtuous. The four benefits of longevity, beauty, happiness, and strength will increase. At the end of the talk, Ayuvadhana and his companions entered the stream. The actions of respect and honor are always practicing by the wise and noble people. We must know and understand what is valuable as valuable and must respect those who are respectable. We should have the right attitudes if not, we'll lose protection and blessing. Then, Sariputta was ideal in this respect, and the most lovely human being on earth. See, the biography of Ven. Sariputta by Nyanaponika Thera, Every Night Ven. Sariputta paid respect to the direction of his first true teacher, Ven. Asaji, Ven. Asaji was the youngest of the Pankavajika who listened to the discourse of the Turing the Wheel of Dharma. Sanjaya was his first teacher, but belonged to an outside sect, and laid down his head towards the direction of Ven. Asaji. Some monks misunderstood his behavior. The first time, when he met Ven. Asaji, who was on his arms round, admired his noble demeanor. He knew that Ven. Asaji was something special from others whom he had met before. Therefore, Sariputta requested him for his teaching. Ven. Asaji gave him a short verse on the teaching of cause and effect. After this short instruction and Sariputta entered the stream, became a Sotapanna. For Dharma teaching, long or short is not important. The importance is its effectiveness. Mostly with long teaching and we do not get much benefit from it. In this respect with wise contemplation, we know that worldly matters and knowledge are wasting our times and lifespan. Everything has their causes, and by stopping the causes and the result will stop. Craving, tanna, is the cause of suffering, dukkha. By destroying craving and dukkha will be ceased. By entering the stream, Sariputta had strong gratitude and respect on his first true teacher Ven. Asaji. For wise and noble people, we have to focus on their noble qualities by respecting and honoring them. If we know and understand more and more Dharma, our respect to the three noble treasures, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha are becoming greater. Among monks, paying respect is according to seniority in rain years, vases. Among common people, paying respect is according to older age or old people e.g., younger siblings to older siblings. Sometimes we pay respect to people for their knowledge and moral integrity. There was a Jataka story about three animals, a small bird, an elephant, and a monkey, on the matter of respect. Three of them relied on a great banyan tree. One day they met together and discussed the matter of paying respect to others by their ages. The elephant mentioned that when he was young, he passed through this small banyan three underneath his stomach. The monkey said that when he was young, he used to eat the buds of the banyan tree. The small bird told them that when he was young, there was no banyan tree at the same spot. Only after he ate the fruits of banyan from another place and excreted it at the same spot and this banyan tree grew out from the seeds of the excreta. Therefore, the small bird was the oldest of them. So, the day onwards the elephant and the monkey had to pay respect to the bird. These three animals were the past lives of Ven, Sariputta, Mahamogalana and the Bodhisattva. The most important matter on the subject of respect is our attitudes to one's parents and teachers. More important of the two is showing respect and honoring to one's parent. 
If someone harmed one's parents, the result of misdeed is heavier than to a teacher. For example, someone kills his parents and his teacher, the killing of one's parents and after death for sure to fall into the hell existence in next life. We should not doubt about it, because the Buddha himself mentioned it. From today media, we know some incidents very unpleasant to see, as to how some people treat their parents. There was more news about killing parents, beating, cursing and treating him very badly. When I was young, I never heard or seen these evil and ingratitude actions and behaviors in families. These are the signs of decadence and bad omens for human societies. If these kinds of evil deeds and behaviors going on like this will become a bad culture and leading to the destruction of human beings. Respect, gratitude and honor to one's parents and teachers are the foundation of goodness to arise. The Buddha himself had high regards about it and praised its qualities. Maybe this was one of the foundation and important cause for Chinese culture and civilization survived up to this day for over 3,000 years. But other great cultures and civilizations were disappeared. With the foundation of goodness on respect, gratitude, honoring and duties to one's parents and teachers develop love, kindness, appreciate joy, considerations for others truly bring happiness, peace and progress for human beings. This was one of the reasons why Chinese sages and noble beings paid attention and emphasis on it as a very important training and education. Another has to be showed respect and gratitude is our teachers. This point is also very weak in nowadays societies. The young and the youth treat their teachers as equal and treat them as friends. Sometimes even worse than to a friend and it becomes very rude. They tease their teacher physically or verbally in the classrooms. A student no respect and gratitude to his teacher will never progress in the study and goodness. Nowadays many teachers complain that students are difficult to teach and train, in the East or the West. The main reason is we use some modern views, such as, equality, human right, democracy, etc. in the wrong and unwholesome ways. Therefore, all these create problems and difficulties in family life and school. With wrong views and ideas in mind creates difficulty to teach and train the children and the students in the right and wholesome directions. It is like catching a poisonous snake, cobra or viper in the wrong way. Instead of grasping its head, we grasp on the tail. If we use these sweet views and ideas, wrongly and improper ways increase the egocentricity, greed, hatred and delusion. And it will create negative results. We can see all these problems in politics, economics, societies, etc. It also likes a knife. It can become a tool for work or kill people. Therefore, the matter of respect or the results of respect is not small wholesome dharma. This quality has to be developed when people are still very young and should start from family life. Even we do not have respect and concern for our parents and teachers, there will be no hope on others. So, the Buddha emphasized it as protection with a blessing. Protection with blessings. Mangala Sutta. By Venerable Uttamo Thera. 22. Humility. The English dictionary explains humility as, someone who has humility is not proud, conceit, and does not believe that they are better than others. Another word, Humble has the same meaning. The commentary explained it as meekness and humble behavior, someone without conceit and vanity. It has the nature of quiet and easily controlled, tenderness, soft-spoken, etc. 
The commentary gave the examples of like a ragged cloth, a beggar, a defanged snake, a bull with broken horns, etc. The result of humility is fame. It is certain that there are other results. The opposite nature of humility is proud and conceit. The outcome of very proud and conceited can be very serious. E.g., the renegade monk Devadatta and the Brahmin girl Magandya. The monk Devadatta, after achieving of supernormal power, psychic power, became conceited and craving for fame and power, he opposed the Buddha. He became so proud and conceited and without paying heed to the Buddha's admonition. At last, he was swallowed by the earth and fell into the great hell, Avicii for his evil actions. The young Magandya was beautiful and very proud of her beauty. Her parents offered her to the Buddha. The Buddha, seeing the parents' spiritual faculties were mature, gave them a short exhortation by using their daughter's body as loathsome and putrid. After the saying both parents became anagamis and entered the orders, later both became arahants. But the young Magandya became very bitter and sore because it hurt her strong conceit which related to her beauty. She vowed to take revenge. Later she became one of the chief queens of King Adena. When the Buddha stayed in Kosambi, where King Adena reigned, she had the chance to take her revenge on the Buddha. At last, all her attempts were failed, and she encountered with a miserable death. Here we can see the danger and harm of strong conceit which brings misfortune to someone. The opposite nature of humility is conceit or pride, mana. Everyone has conceit, mana. It is one of the latent dispositions, anasaya, and one of the defilement, kalesa. Mana is eradicated only at the stage of arhatship. It uses to happen in people who have a fortune, beauty, highly educated, high status, etc. Without any of them, also people can have pride. Some take pride in their youthfulness, healthiness, life faculty, live a longer life, yobana madha, Arogya Madha, Jivita Madha, etc. The qualities of respect and humility are connected. Someone has conceit, no humility, cannot show respect to others. And without respect means someone has conceit. Therefore, they are supporting each other. Conceit has the nature of rigidity. A rigid person cannot or will not change his attitudes, opinions, or behavior. So, they are difficult to teach or admonish. It is also a cause for downfall and dislike by others. A person has the quality of humility loved by others. It also increases or develops the wholesome dharma to a holy life, Brahmakariya dharma. The quality of humility is the nature of noble and wise people. In textbooks, it taught us to behave like a rag for wiping feet or a poisonous snake which fangs a broken or a bull with broken horns. Then, Sariputta was a very good example as a humble person. In the Dharmapada, there was a story described his great quality of humility. It was the end of a rain retreat, Vasa, Ven. Sariputta was about to set out a journey. He was saying goodbye to some monks and passing a young bhikkhu, without saying anything to him. But his outer robe brushed against this monk body when he was passing through him. This young monk had conceit and also wanted Ven. Sariputta to pay attention to him. Therefore, bore some grudge against him and approached the Buddha. He complained to the Buddha that Ven. Sariputta had abused him. The Buddha, therefore, sent for Sariputta and questioned him about the complaint. He answered that how could a monk who steadfastly kept his mind on the body, 
not apologized to a fellow monk after had done something wrong. He was like the earth with no feeling of like or dislike when flowers and rubbish piled on it. He was also like the rag cloth, the beggar, a bull with broken horns, etc. There were nine examples. The Pai Can Sayadaw gave a natural example. Rice plants when they are young and immature, the stalks are at upright positions. After they are grown up and laden with rice grain, the stalks are bending down. These are the differences between a fool and a wise, or someone has conceit and someone has humility. There was another story about Ven. Sariputta of showing his humility to a seven-year-old young novice. One time the robe of Ven. Sariputta was not very neat and a seven-year-old young novice saw it. And he informed it to Sariputta. On the spot, Sariputta corrected his robe by readjusting it instantly. He humbly asked the novice as was it good enough. Ven. Sariputta and Ven. Rahula, the only son of the Buddha, were high-class persons with great wisdom and very humble nature if a person has conceit and difficulty to possess good qualities. If a person becomes wiser and he will become humbler. By knowing more about the faults of the candor, body, one's conceit will be decreased, and then he will look for the refuge. We cannot find it externally. Most people are looking for outside that they would never find it. Most religions came from external searches and speculations. At last most people will die without the true refuge. When still alive, they encounter a lot of difficulty and problems which they cannot solve or overcome by outside powers. The perfect or true refuge is wisdom, panna which is the internal quality of the mind. Everybody has it, and only we need to develop it. Therefore, the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, Arya Sangha, are the perfect or true refuge. They represent only one thing, which is perfect wisdom. Generally speaking, the real refuge for everyone is the wholesome Dharmas such as Dana, Sila, Samadhi and Panna. These are not the outside powers and sensual pleasures which most people rely on it. Generally speaking, the outside powers and external things, matters are untrue and belong to the fleeting nature. These things can be deluded our mind and created a lot of problems and sufferings in the world and societies. These unfortunate things are happening around us, which we can see in today's world. Violence, terrorism, wars in the name of religion and power and all kinds of pollution, mind, body and nature, in the name of economics for sensual pleasures and overindulgence. All these miserable things are created by fools and not the wise. The quality of humility or without conceit is one of the characteristics of great wisdom. Therefore, everyone should develop this noble quality. So, the Buddha said, humility was the highest protection with a blessing.